All right, so I've always liked playing around with new tools and have been wanting to get a laser cutter to cut out blanks and in do inlay projects with. So this video is gonna be a little bit of a diversion from my normal hand carving only kind of tool videos here. And this is basically gonna be an introduction for hobbyists, wood carvers, and the like who are interested in using laser engravers and cutters in addition to what they're usually using. For example, like one of my upcoming projects that I wanna do, I'm gonna use a, this relief carving template of a butterfly that my wife made for me, and I'm gonna turn it into a little puzzle after I carve it out by hand. This should be a fun little project. I'm pretty excited to see how it'll go here. So for this video, uh, I reached out to Iker and they were nice enough to send over one of their uh, K1 Pro Max 48 watt laser systems. And I've been playing with it for the past six months, trying to really understand how it works and how I can utilize it for my what, what I like to do here. Now, if you do get a laser system like this, Go ahead and give Iker a look. Uh, from my experiences thus far, they get the job more than done and aren't ridiculously expensive. And that's pretty cool. Now, before we go on to like what projects I did with the system, let's go over some basic understandings of, of these laser engravers and cutters that really no one seems to really touch on here on YouTube. So getting started, if you don't know anything about these laser systems, consider this a basic crash course. That way it help you get in a better idea of what they are and what they do. You'll still need to do some research on how each of these individual systems work and all the safety equipment needed because, well, it, it's lasers. Um, so these things do have a little bit of a learning curve and some requires some trial and error to really dial in. And also you, you're gonna need to make sure you have enough space to use on your workbench. But once you get it all set, it's a super useful tool to use and um, implement into your current tool set. All right, so. Let's start on the laser system itself. And to be upfront, the good ones are not cheap. Uh, personally, I would recommend no less than a 20 watt system if, you, if you're gonna be using like a fiber optic or CO2 laser cutter, which those systems are more expensive. If you want a cheaper version, the diode lasers are a bit more inexpensive, but keep in mind, you don't wanna run them at 100% power or you might burn out the laser diode itself. So in this case, a 24 watt system will be sufficient for thinner material. The one that I have, which more than gets the job done, is a 48 watt a diode system that I run at 80 to 90% power. Iker also sells a 70 watt system with full enclosure, which they say will cut through a one inch piece of basswood in one pass, which that's really cool. So let's actually get into the more important stuff here, enclosures and filters. So plain and simple, any laser engraver system that does not have a properly made enclosure that's available for that exact system with a filtered window to block the dangerous laser lights for it is an absolute waste of your time and money and the company really doesn't care, care about you at all. I've seen a lot of them out there on the market and my friends even have some, if they don't come with, with an enclosure already with it or available for it, just pass it up. It's really not worth your time or money. Next one is the smoke filter. Basically, wood is organic material and once it burns, it smokes. So lasers are gonna burn through the wood and create a lot of smoke. You will absolutely need a good fume extractor. The one that I'm using, uh, I actually use it for soldering. Anything with like a flow rate of like 200 cubic meters per hour or like a, was it a 117 cubic feet per minute of airflow will suffice. You just want that suction in there to pull the air out. Otherwise, it, it just it's gonna build up in there over time. Um, the original smoke filter I had, it would work, but I had to wait like 10 minutes for the smoke to fully filter out. Plus, it since it filtered out so slowly, it allows some of the smoke to leak out uh, and kind of smoked up my garage. So I had to upgrade that to something a little bit more powerful. The good filters will actually have a fan or a turbine that pulls air through the system, not necessarily push it through the system. So you want the ones that kind of suck the air through the filters, not try to push it through the filters. I'll have the one that I actually have in the pinned comment below so you, you can find it. Now keep in mind, these laser systems are not exactly plug and play. You will need to at least have a computer with the proper control program. In the case with my Iker system, I chose to use the um, program Lightburn. There's a couple other programs too, but this is what I decided to use. You will need to buy the license for Lightburn, uh, but it is cheap and you only need the, the G-code version of it. But first, absolutely try the uh, free trial, make sure that you like it. Uh, and understand how to use it. There's a ton of light burn, burn tutorials out there on YouTube, so I'm not gonna cover exactly how to use it on this channel, but I'll have links down below for you for the reference. So like one of my other videos on wood hardness, different materials and woods will require different power and speed to engrave or cut through. 
For this, I actually recommend doing a small test at varying speeds. For cutting, I recommend use this system at its max recommended power and at its fastest speed that'll cut through the wood in one go. Uh, Iker does give a really nice list of these various materials and thicknesses with cut speeds for that specific system. That way you have a great idea where to start, but you still will absolutely need to test it on your wood or material that you're gonna engrave or cut into first just to make sure that it's set properly. All right. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. So my uses for this is primarily for a fun little intricate decor and like designs that I absolutely can't do by hand or do it quickly in large quantities. Uh, for Valentine's Day, I cut out a bunch of super intricate hearts from basswood. I also used my system to create some uh, fun Mother's Day artwork to put on a wall. But what I have really been enjoying doing are these little intricate wood inlay projects, uh, which usually involve using two different colors of wood. You can either buy the patterns from people on Etsy, which I did on some of these guys here. Just look for the SVG files, or you can convert your own drawings with a program like Inkscape to SVG files. That's what I did with the, my dragon here. We just took my drawing, I took a picture of it, imported it into the, the program, and then I was able to create my own SVG file, which, which I was able to transfer to the Lightburn and then create my own cutout. So currently my favorite thing to do with this laser system is to create these little beautiful inlay projects using two different woods, which in this case, it's gonna be walnut and cherry. And then I use like a basswood backer to mount everything on and just glue it all together. Noted not all the cuts are gonna be perfect, but I can get some nice little shapes in there. And then I just use wood filler for gaps or just as extra boldness and highlight. Once finished and the glue is dry, I sand the surface, blow out all the dust and apply some wood finish for a really cool piece of art here. I've been giving these, these things out as gifts for family and friends, and everyone really likes them. While the laser cutter does make it easier, it's, it's still a good several hour project to make since I'm making two, sometimes even three at once, depending on how many different colors of wood I use. And even more so if you have a lot of little intricate pieces here. But it gets really cool as well because then you can use like the natural colorations of the, the wood pattern if, it's, if they have a cool spiral to it or a cool pattern. That way you can use that same exact slab right there and you're not cutting out individual pieces and trying to mix and match. You get the cool grain structure going there as well. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep using my laser system for various projects like these as well. I really, really like doing it. And I really wanna make <laughs> this little butterfly cut out and turn into a puzzle. Of which, again, I'm gonna be doing a relief carving by hand. And then I'm gonna use a, the laser system with a uh, puzzle pattern that I'll probably either make or find and then just cut it out. I'm gonna make a whole video on that sometime in the future and I'll show you how it goes. Really excited to see how it goes here. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you have yourself a good day.